China, you had, you have almost 70% of the wealth and 1% of the population. And a large part of that 1% one, 1 were government people that actually left China, especially financially. They're the second largest purchases right now of real estate in the United States from the Canadians. They're buying businesses. They're investing in all different types of things. And examples of cross-border transactions that we're starting to see right now are things like EB-5 program. Uh, there's 10,000 people in the EB-5 program. Chinese account for almost 40% of it right now. Um, as I mentioned, they're the second largest purchases of real estate right now. And what we're also seeing is uh, in the bankruptcy area, We've been getting very involved in the bankruptcy area. Not that Chinese companies are going bankrupt in the United States, but in certain sectors, like technology and apparel, the Chinese happen to be some of the largest creditors of US companies going bankrupt. And those Chinese companies are very unfamiliar with the bankruptcy process. They typically, although they're the largest creditors, don't participate in the process. So our firm is very, very active right now in helping some of these Chinese companies collect their money. Now, um, I'm going to take two minutes just to give you, you know, some of my background, and then I'm going to turn it over to these two young ladies, and I'm going to join at the end. Um, and I'll leave you with, you know, for me, number one rule of doing cross-border business in China. Um, is if you ever get involved in a transaction where you have a Chinese on one side and a Jew on the other, just walk away. There's nothing left. You're going to start cutting in half, okay? Stay away from those transactions. Now, for myself, I've been working in China right now. I actually, I've been an accountant now for over 30 years. I spent my first approximately 20 years working in Europe. I had a mentor from Bratislava, spoke 11 languages perfectly. And I spent my first 20 years kind of flying the roads in Europe. I've worked in most of the countries, east and west. About 12 years ago, um, for various reasons, I ended up in China. It wasn't someplace I actually wanted to go. Uh, I had been working in Europe for many years, and the plane rides were, I thought, were long, and now China, it's just forever. So some people ask me where I'm based. I tell them I've gone continental and united. But um, I, I basically spend about a week to 10 days every five weeks in China. I've logged right now over 100 trips to China. I work in almost 150 cities. Uh, we employ about 80 people in China in four offices. We have offices in Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, Guangzhou. About 95% of our staff comes from the big four. And we've lost about six people in the last eight years. So we have a very, very dedicated staff. We're very proud of them. We work for some of the largest companies in China and a lot of the middle market companies. Uh, it also helps my wife is Chinese. That also helps. <laughs> Um, so with that, um, I think, um, which one would like to go next? Marjorie? I'll go next. Okay. Um, Marjorie Bailey is a partner of mine from San Francisco. She's got over 20 years of auto experience, a lot of the technology field. Um, and our offices across the United States, which we have 24, um, lend us a lot of support. Because a lot of what our firm like, would like to offer people, Chinese particularly, um, is kind of a seamless service. We have almost 13 or 1,400 employees in the United States, and we're going to be approaching close to 100 in China. So we are one of the larger firms in China serving this market. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marjorie. And um, I would encourage all of you, I mean, uh, I speak often, not a lot of people ask questions at the end. So if you'd like to ask questions in the middle, I would just, you know, as long as it doesn't get out of hand, feel free. Okay? So with that, Marjorie?